On today's video, we're gonna take a look at the top 10 ways the Mega 65 is better than my MacBook Pro. Is that possible? Could the Mega 65 actually have features that make it better than a modern MacBook? I think there are. I think there are 10 reasons and I'm gonna share those with you in today's video. Let's get started. Now, full disclosure, I use my MacBook Pro M1 for everything I do during the day. I use it at work, I use it for my blog, I use it for my YouTube channels, I edit all my video on a MacBook Pro, and it is the best MacBook Pro I have ever owned. It's got the best battery life, it's fast, and it just does everything I need to do. But having said that, believe it or not, there are some things where the Mega 65 excels. Hey, and I can think of thousands of ways that my MacBook outperforms my Mega 65, let's be honest. However, where's the fun in that? What I wanna do is re-engage the rivalry from the 1980s between Commodore and Apple. To match the higher intelligence of the new Commodore 128, an Apple IIc would have to add three more IIcs to expand to 512K, an extra keypad, 30 block graphic sets, color sprites, two more voices, four instruments, a cartridge port, a joystick port, and a Commodore 64. And that's what we're gonna do in this top 10 list of 10 ways the Mega 65 is better than my Mac. And before we begin diving into this list, let's talk a little bit about the Mega 65. Now in the comments on my blog and YouTube channel, I've seen people say that they believe the Mega 65 is vaporware. This thing's never gonna be released. And yes, while there was a delay from December, we are hoping that the Easter Bunny is now bringing our Mega 65 to our front doorsteps. So what happened in December? Well, to quote the Mega 65 team, we have been fighting a shortage of electronic components for months and mostly succeeded. But now, last minute, seemingly trivial things like cardboard for the lovely printed boxes are unavailable. We most probably cannot ship before March 2022 and are truly sorry for this. The good news is we will then be able to ship larger quantities at once, which means you might face close to or no delay at all. We will keep you updated and continue doing what we all, you, the community, and the Mega 65 team believe in. Like the Mega 65 team, I'll continue to keep you updated on my blog, on my Twitter, and in video, so make sure you subscribe. Look at these names right here. These are my new producers. You can now support me via Buy Me A Coffee with a one-time activity or become a full member via my fun Commodore-inspired membership levels. When you support the channel, you get additional content and fun extras. All right, finally, let's talk about the 10 ways the Mega 65 is actually better than my M1 MacBook Pro. Number one, boot time. Commodore computers, like all early 8-bit computers, have fast boot times. I can't think of any 8-bit computer that doesn't beat a modern Mac to start up. Despite the M1 MacBook Pro booting faster than any other Mac I've owned, it can't compare to the Mega 65. Flip the switch and two seconds later, it's ready to go. The Mega 65 boots almost as fast as the time it takes to hold down the power button on my MacBook Pro. Once booted, the Mega 65 is ready to go. However, on the MacBook after boot, you need to log in and wait a little bit longer as the remainder of the OS or the operating system loads. Granted, the MacBook Pro is no slouch when it comes to boot up, but it can't top the Mega 65. What about reboots you ask or didn't ask? No competition there either. Toggling the Mega 65 power switch with a is faster than using your mouse to find the restart up option up in the menu, wherever it is. The Mega 65 includes a reset button. Tap it and even faster than a power cycle, the Mega 65 is ready to go. It would seem the Mega 65 continues the tradition of Commodore fast boot and even beats wonderful modern systems like the C64 and my Combian Pi 400. And the Mega 65 even includes fast system updates, which we'll talk about next. Number two, fast updates. The Mega 65 receives regular updates to both its field programmable gate array or FPGA and its closed ROMs. Prior to 2022, flashing the core was a slow process. However, a recent update, and you can find the link to that video showing you how fast it is on my companion blog post, 
increased the core flash update speeds by 1,809%. Now, when the MacBook Pro receives an update, well, it's gonna take you some time. It means a multi-gigabyte download followed by a series of restarts, and even with the speed of the M1 processor, the update can take 10 minutes or more. Even when I add the time it takes to download and transfer the core to the SD card, the Mega 65 process is faster. Update times will continue to decrease once and if, which I believe the if is coming, the Mega 65 includes the ability to download the core directly via ethernet to the SD card. Now during these updates, we use the Mega 65 keyboard and there's really something special about that keyboard. Let's talk about that next. Number three, the keyboard. You know, Apple's had a tough time with keyboards, especially on their portable devices like the MacBook and the MacBook Pro. But current MacBooks include a fine keyboard and a night quote fine. However, the Mega 65 includes a mechanical keyboard that is a pleasure to use and even better than the one on my MacBook Pro. To quote the Museum of Electronic Games and Art, Mega, if you were wondering where Mega 65 comes from, our friends at GMK have done an incredible job producing these uncompromising mechanical keyboards. Metal frames, Cherry MX switches, four RGB LEDs, CPLD based bus system, and other details make the best keyboards we can imagine, and the best keyboard you're ever going to find on any Commodore computer ever. Typing on the Mega 65 is a joy, and while Commodore computers had better keyboards than many of their 8-bit compadres of their time, I'm talking to you, Atari 400 and Timex Sinclair, ugh, that was a horrible keyboard, there was obviously room for Commodore to improve on the keyboard in their old 8-bit computers. The Mega 65 adds, again, the best keyboard ever to grace an 8-bit Commodore computer and probably any brand of 8-bit computer to include Cherry MX switches attached to a steel frame. Typing is comfortable, responsive, and oh, so clicky. Listen to that, isn't that great? Love that sound. The layout of the Mega 65 keyboard is an upgrade to the Commodore 128 keyboard, but omits the right-hand side numeric keypad. That space has been replaced for an area to contain the internal three and a half inch floppy drive. More on that later. The Mega 65 keyboard follows the design layout of the Commodore 65, but with an upgrade. Both the caps and shift lock keys include an LED indicator not found on the prototype for the Commodore 65. The Mega 65 includes two LED indicators at the top of the keyboard, one on the left, one on the right. The left indicator includes two internal LEDs as does the one on the right. And you can program the colors of the left and right side of each of those LEDs using assembly or basic Additionally, the LED indicator on the right is used for disk activity. Since Apple decided to kill their touch bar, these LEDs now allow the Mega 65 to provide visual feedback that current MacBook Pros lack. Because the Mega 65 team stuck to the original Commodore keyboard layout, your muscle memory is going to be confused. Especially when typing symbols like open quotations and at symbols and parentheses and even the equal. With the inclusion of function and modifier keys, there's a lot of keystrokes to learn on the Mega 65 that are not going to transfer back to your MacBook Pro or vice versa. But you know, that's a good thing. We want the original Commodore keyboard experience for basic programming and immediate mode. Hmm, let's talk about those. Number four, immediate mode, basic programming, and text. The Mega 65 boots to a blue screen called the Screen Editor. At the top of the screen is a color rainbow, and in the center is copyright information that includes the ROM version, date, and time. A blinking cursor awaits you without loading software. There are three things you can begin doing at the empty blue screen, and you may not have known this. Number one, we have something called immediate mode. In immediate mode, what you can do is you can test basic programming lines, but you can even use it like a calculator. The obvious thing that everyone knows that you can do is you can create a basic program. Use the Enhanced Mega 65 Basic Version 10 programming language to create your own programs. It's the best basic of any Commodore computer, and software can run basic at a blazing fast 40 megahertz using the basic fast command or slow down using the speed command. Mega 65 Basic includes enhanced editing features such as page scrolling with the DIRW command and search and replace via the change command.
Now, the last thing you can do at the blue screen is a little bit of a hidden gem. This is something called text mode. Let me talk you through this. First of all, you use the basic command edit on to activate text mode. When you do, the text on the screen is no longer parsed by the basic interpreter and the ready prompt changes to the OK prompt. You still use line numbers to organize the lines of text. Now, if you want to automate this process, use the auto 10 command or any other incremental number. Save the text to disk as a .seq file using the same command that we use for basic, dsave. To recall the file, use the dload command. Again, very similar to basic. Now, here's a new one though. If you want to view a text file on the disk, use the type command followed by the name of the text file. You now have a Commodore text editor at your disposal. Use edit off to return to basic mode and the ready prompt. So those are three things that you can do just with the blue screen. And to do any of those, I need to load software on my MacBook Pro. For instance, to do calculations, I'd have to load a calculator. If I want to run basic programming, unfortunately, basic is no longer included on a Mac or an Apple computer. Man, what a shame. However, you can run an emulator such as Chipmunk to run basic. But again, it is another app. And finally, for text editing, just simply load the text editor of your choice. Those are three things you can do on the Mega 65 at boot up without an app. Hey, and once an application loads, who knows if you're going to be able to get anything done with all those distractions on your MacBook, which leads me to Number five, distraction free. The Mega 65 is free of notifications. Boy, that's nice and refreshing. It's you and the Mega 65. There's no notification system to distract you. That's a nice change of pace from modern computing devices that want to disrupt your life every two minutes. Mega 65 applications don't lurk in memory and bug you when you are focused on another task. It's a small thing we retro computing enthusiasts appreciate about our 1980s computers. Peace and serenity of 8-bit computing. I think that's a thing. I'm going to coin that. You mentioned applications, Retrocombs. Are you saying that there is software available for the Mega 65? There is. There's all kinds of software. But you know what? There's boxed software available now. Number six, boxed software. At the time of this writing, the first box software, Hibernated One Director's Cut for the Mega 65 from developer Stefan Vogt, from Puddle Software and publisher Polyplay was released for 35 euros or $37. The publisher describes it as Hibernated One, The Place is Death, Director's Cut, is an Infocom style interactive fiction game. If Infocom had been asked to recreate the classic Hibernated, the Director's Cut would have been the outcome. What's great about this, it's available two ways as a digital download, but also as a box set. Listen to what you get in the box set. The shrink wrap box includes the, all the director's cut features on software, a three and a half inch floppy cardboard box with slip case, a mission patch, developer's autograph card, micro SD card, including disc images and more, a manual. Can you believe that? An app with a manual, a quick guide on how to play interactive fiction, stickers and a poster. These features add to the nostalgic feel of purchasing software. My copy is ordered and I can't wait to open my box and dive in. Stay tuned for a full review and let's hope this is the first of many box software releases for the Mega 65. Also be on the lookout for a live stream when I receive that where we'll play the game together. I don't remember the last time I purchased a physical box of software. It's all App Store this and App Store that. While the App Store convenience is nice for games, I miss those little extras like the printed maps, patches and stickers. By the way, if you want a retro combs magnet, be sure and check out my buy me a coffee page where you can learn how to become a member and get a retro combs magnet sent directly to your house anywhere in the world. So running hibernated on your Mega 65 is pretty easy and we can ensure its compatibility because of the flexibility of the operating system, which we'll talk about next. Number seven, operating system flexibility. The Mega 65 includes an internal SD card and an external micro SD card. Why are those important? Well, the internal SD card serves as the default SD card. Inserting a micro SD card into the external slot overrides the default and allows for multiple ROM experimentation. So you can always ensure that you have a working operating system on the internal card and you can experiment with the external card. The Mega 65 includes seven slots for cores. What can you do with those cores? Not only can you run the Mega 65, 
but cores are now available for Game Boy and the ZX Spectrum. And there are Commodore cores to come, such as a C64 core that is actively in development. And stay tuned for more collaboration with the Mr. Community to bring more of those cores to the Mega 65. I'd personally recommend sticking with Commodore cores since the keyboard is better suited for these computers, but the Mega 65 allows you to make that decision. If you want to find out what cores are available and which cores are being developed, be sure to check out the M65 cores page. Link in, you guessed it, the companion blog post. So going back to our comparison between the Mega 65 and the Mac, try downgrading or using alternate OSs on your Mac. The M1 chip does allow emulation, but the experience requires emulation software and complete operating system installs, and popular emulation software for Intel Macs are not yet supported on M1 Macs. The Mega 65 Core and SD card solution provides an interesting and authentic experience. Because the FPGA is programmable, each core can use and enhance the operation of the Mega 65 and the numerous ports on the device. Number eight, ports. You know, my MacBook Pro has three ports, two USB-C and a headphone. If I need additional connections, I plug in a dongle and out of the box, the Mega 65 includes two nine pin DIN connectors for joysticks or a mouse, a cartridge slot for C64 cartridges and hopefully a Mega 65 cartridge at some point, an IEC connector for drives, disk drives such as 1541, 71, or 81, and a printer, if you get that working, please let me know, an RGB connector for VGA monitor, an ethernet port for network connectivity, and a headphone jack for headphones or powered speakers. Now, as I mentioned, one of the three ports on my MacBook Pro is a headphone port, so there's that in this whole world of devices not having headphone jacks. But the numerous Mega 65 connectors provide compatibility with older Commodore devices and new creations like the Pi 1541 that simulates a five and a quarter or three and a half inch floppy drive. And let's talk about floppy drives. Number nine, a built in three and a half inch floppy disk drive. While the Mega 65 does support .d81 disk images and D64 to come, the Mega 65 includes a physical three and a half inch floppy drive. This is something an Apple computer will never have again. For no other reason, there's no room for it. A three and a half inch drive provides ample storage for your Mega 65 programs. Programs are tiny compared to their modern siblings. And Mega 65 developer Paul is committed to pushing the limits of what is possible on a three and a half inch floppy disk drive. He stretched capacity for the original 1581 drive format from 800 kilobytes to two megabytes. I don't see Apple messing with the firmware and the kernel on my MacBook Pro to push file storage on my internal 512 gig to one gig. But there's another reason that three and a half inch floppy is a nice addition to the Mega 65, and that is for nostalgic reasons. Number 10, nostalgia. I hinted earlier that unfortunately basic is no longer a part or delivered with an Apple computer. And new Macs have no connection to their older 8-bit Apple II and Apple IIe and Apple IIc parents. The Apple II Commodore 64 battle was won by Commodore. They outsold Apple and the Commodore 64 became the best-selling computer of all time. However, in the end, Apple won the war. And while you can say modern Macs have some legacy connection to the very first Macs, there's no legacy system for the beloved Apple II. The Mega 65 picks up the Commodore legacy and brings it forward to the 21st century. And they do it in a way that's both modern and retro at the same time. The C64 came close, but the Mega 65 is a true successor. And when they ship, you will open the box, plug in the cables, flip the switch and yell, Commodore is back, baby. So that includes my list of the 10 ways that a Mega 65 outperforms or is better than my M1 MacBook Pro. You likely disagree with all 10 of those, or maybe you agree with all 10 of those, or maybe I missed some. You know what you can do? You can contribute to this video by adding your comments down below. While you're down there, make sure you hit like, subscribe, alerts, all that business. And hey, you can also thank me down there. So be sure and click the thank you button as well. As I stated earlier, this video and the companion blog post was just a fun exercise to help you learn more about the Mega 65 and to get you excited about the Easter Bunny release. Even though I have the dev kit, 
I can't wait for the Mega 65 to arrive on my doorstep in a box and I will be sure and do an open the box with you on a live stream. So make sure you subscribe so that you will have those alerts. So that's my list. That's it, and I'm gonna stick to it for a while. At this time, I don't have anything else to add, so Retrocomb's out. Commodore is back, baby.